I need to be blinded by the light, I've been told. That's a good position to be in. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, as I work through my presentation, um, there's going to be the opportunity to win some awesome prizes. I've got a sleepless in Seattle fridge magnet right here. Pretty cool. Um, a mug, which is very good quality as well. And um, this is my personal favorite. It's, um, it's like a snow globe, but with rings in it, and it has the space needle inside. So I'm very excited. I, I really hope you are too. I'm also like a bit like mal-coordinated with wardrobes because like this is supposed to plug in somewhere, like a pocket. I don't have one of those. So I just need to remember to press this one and just hold this one. So we're gonna, we're gonna give it a go anyway. So I kind of changed the title of my presentation to International SEO, How Not to Suck, and A Quest to Challenge Conventional Wisdom. So um, this is kind of the stuff you need to know about me. Um, I'm a lead SEO at Distilled, and I've been in marketing for 11 years, but I don't have an MBA, so I'm officially not at all, I think we've established. <laughs> So that, that's good, right? Um, last three years, I've spent um, playing online. I enjoy it very much. And my hair changes color a lot, so I, I never have like the right photo with the right hair color, but it, it is me. It's not some weirdness. So what I'll be covering today, really why you should care about international SEO, how not to suck at it, and then in kind of part two, it's a presentation of two parts, um, I'll be talking about local links specifically and kind of whether or not you should care about those. And I'm very excited about that. Um, kind of, b before I kick off properly, can I get a, a show of hands of like anybody who's kind of done international SEO? So either you've done international, like not your language, or just not your country? That's nice, I love you all. It's gonna be marvelous. Okay, so, part one. Um, th this is really kind of what it's all about. Good rankings in one country don't translate even if there's no language barrier. So I've kind of got two examples for you here, which you probably can't see too well. This is UK results for buy DVDs, um, and then this is US results for buy DVDs. Now, why are they different? They're different for a number of reasons, right? We have a different um, regions for DVDs in the UK, so I, I might not want, oh, hi, Kate. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we have different regions in the UK. That was lame, wasn't it? Don't do that if you're ever presenting. <laughs> Rubbish. Um, so yeah, we have different regions for DVDs. And like if I bought a, a US DVD, it might not work in my DVD player at home, right? Um, also, if I got delivered a US site, they might not ship to the UK. That would be rubbish as a user, horrible. So this is why we have different results in different countries. So if you want to rank internationally, what is it that you need to do? I love this. This is my boss. Isn't he nice? Don't mess it up. You'll be fine. Th that sounds flippant, right? But mainly what happens when it comes to international is people just mess it up. It's still SEO. We all know how to do SEO. We know that content's important. We know that links are important. Um, there is an added complexity, definitely, with international. But it's still SEO. If you remember it's still SEO, you, you just can't go too far wrong. So, unfortunately, Companies do mess this up a lot. First thing I'm going to talk to you about is um, language and location. I think people are often guilty of forgetting that, that you can't split these two. So I'm British. I speak English. Some of you guys here are American. You also speak English. And yet a lot of the time we misunderstand each other, an, an awful lot of the time. So like, for example, um, if you were to compliment me on my suspenders, I'd be like, why are you looking up my skirt? That's disgusting. Because suspenders in the UK are the things that kind of um, hold your um, stockings up, not your braces. I call these braces, you call these suspenders. So the things that hold your trousers up versus stockings. I'm getting blank looks. I'm going to go into the light more so I can't see you. No, no, that's horrible. OK, so a, a pop quiz. And, and this is the chance for you to win some awesome, really awesome prizes. So. Um, which languages are spoken in Switzerland? I'd like you to put your hand up and I'm going to pick somebody. This is for the cup. Oh, oh, Gianluca. Gianluca is waving at me like a loon. Yeah? Just name one of them for me. Italian. Thank you. 
Gianluca, pr proud owner of a sleepless in Seattle cup. It's marvellous, isn't it? I love that you're clapping the cup. It costs like $7. I don't know what that is in pounds. I'm going to pick you, sir, in the brown jumper. You, yeah. French. French. You, sir, are now the proud owner of a, a fridge magnet. Sleepless in Seattle. It was really worth coming, wasn't it? What was the ticket price, Rand? It's, it's totally worth it, isn't it? Seriously. OK, so for the snow globe, snow globe, Oh, yes. Thank you very much. There's no more prizes after this, so like, I totally understand if you want to go get coffee. Like, it's fine. It's, it's tiring, this. I'm, I haven't got any more prizes. I'm sorry. I should have got more, shouldn't I? Yeah. Stupid. Rubbish idea. OK, so um, I managed to go backwards. We're going to keep going forwards. So, right, we've thought a bit about language and location. So, you know, I, you've decided, right, you want to target English speakers in the US and the UK, for example. That's what you've decided. At this point, loads of companies just go mental and like, yeah, I'm going to buy some domains. I'm going to just guess all my information architecture. They, they just don't stop and think. So at this point, I'd really like you to stop and think about whether or not your brand translates. So insurance.co.uk, that makes perfect sense. Oh, look, don't do that. Sorry. I'm really bad at these. So um, insurance.co.uk makes sense. In the UK, we call it insurance. .com, that's a generic, but let's imagine we're using it for the US. That makes sense. In the US, they call it insurance. In Italy, they don't call it insurance. So if you buy insurance.it, it, it kind of makes you a moron, right? <laughs> People will laugh at you. People think, oh, yeah, that company, like what? They don't, care about, they don't care about me. As a consumer in Italy, you'll be sitting there going, what a stupid company. That, like, it doesn't even make sense to me. So just stop and think. OK, uh, kind of as I move through, I, I've done this little flow diagram, which I could have made prettier, probably, with some kittens or something, but I haven't. But this is, this is kind of the process to, it, to avoid sucking, essentially. So firstly, define your languages, define your countries, Check if your brand translates before you do anything else. So now, now we can figure out information architecture. So in this instance, you've got two choices. Country code TLDs, so your domain, .co.uk, .it, wherever you're, wherever you're targeting. Or you can use a generic domain, so your domain, .com, .net, .info, whatever. And then a subfolder, so slash UK, slash FR for wherever you're targeting. I missed one, didn't I? Using subdomains to geotarget causes the needless death of hundreds of kittens a year. I, I need your help to stop this. We need to stop this right now. I'll explain why in a while. So, information architecture op options. So, yeah, cctld, yourdomain.it, or whatever, or generic, yourdomain.com, plus your subfolder, UK, whatever. I'm just going to talk briefly about the, the pros and cons, because there's, there's never like one right answer. And sometimes this stuff is harder than you would like it to be, right? So um, the pros, really, of using a country code TLD is that it is the strongest possible geotargeting signal. I I'm talking about from a search engine perspective. I'm going to talk a bit more later on about like, how hard this is for search engines to figure out. But like, for a search engine, th there can be no question in like a search engines mind, do they have minds? Probably, they're that clever now. Um, but, but, but you know, if, if you've picked a .it, it's definitely for Italy. If you've picked a .co.uk, it's definitely for the UK. It's not for anywhere else. So you're kind of helping the search engines out. So it's a great geotargeting signal. The, the obvious downside is, is that you're kind of starting from scratch for every territory that you're in. So it's like, yeah, geotargeting signal-wise, it's brilliant, but it, it, you're going to need to work really hard to get this stuff ranking. So that's kind of the, the obvious downside. Um, the other thing I should probably mention is you can't always get the CCTLD you want, right? We have particularly crazy laws about this in Europe. Like, Ireland are fabulous. Like, you can't actually get a .ie unless you're, like, an Irish registered company with a bricks and mortar address, and they make it really hard. And so you might not be able to buy it even if you want to. And in that instance, I would suggest you go the subfolder route. So you get yourself a generic domain, 
Bear in mind, of course, with your generic domain, needs to translate, right? If you're targeting multiple languages, don't buy insurance. Well, actually, you know, I probably still would buy insurance and just use that for English-speaking countries, right? But whatever. I'm now making it more complicated than it needs to be. So the good thing about subfolders is that domain strength is passed to the subfolder. So essentially, instead of building like five or six like disparate sites, which are going to have to work really hard in order to get them to rank, you're just going to build one awesomely strong site, which hopefully will be nice. Now, the cons of this approach is that it's not such a strong geo-targeting signal. You'll likely have problems with the wrong content ranking. We see it a lot in the UK, an awful lot in the UK. So the .com will outrank the slash UK folder. And it's kind of like you need to weigh up like how much of a problem that is for you. If you work hard, you can get the right content ranking. Uh, however, I mean, I feel a bit bad for Gap. We've sagged them off a bit today, but I'm going to continue to. Gap, like mind-blowingly stupid in terms of a gap here. They're not here, right? <laughs> You're not going to admit to it now, are you? Even if you are. So um, the gap, like, um, uh, they have gap.com, right? But that's US. That's US only. So um, in like a, a fit of, I don't know, genius, they decided to buy um, thegap.eu for Europe. Now, um, .eu is not a CCTLD, right? Europe is not a country. It, it's a continent with lots of different countries in it who speak different languages and, you know, we fight a lot. It, you know, historically we've fought quite a bit, right? It, we don't, you know, it, People don't really feel very European, particularly British people. So this idea of like this sort of half-assed attempt to kind of like go, oh yeah, we'll just nod towards some sort of geo-targeting, but wait, it's not really geo-targeted and the dot-coms outranking anyway because we've not really bothered to do any link building. It's a disaster. So yeah, don't be as dumb as the gap. That's like a pro tip. So. Um, this is why I really think subdomains suck, right? They, they suck because they're just like the worst of both worlds. There aren't any pros because little or no strength is passed from the domain to the subdomain. So effectively, you're, you're sticking everything in one place, but like the strength of your domain is, is, is not helping any of your subdomains. You're still going to have the same problems or likely problems with the wrong content ranking. So it's just like a really unhappy place to be. Really, really horrible, horrible place to be. I recognize sometimes you might be forced to do this. So I know that some people have to deal with horrible CMS uh, <laughs> systems and th they can't do folders for whatever reason. I, I feel your pain, but if you have a choice, never choose this. Never, ever, ever choose it. Okay, just a quick note on multiple languages. Don't forget about those countries in which they speak multiple languages. I've picked on Canada this time. Um, you're going to need separate folders for each of your languages that you're actually targeting. So if you want to target uh, Canadians who speak English, you do yourdomain.ca slash en, and French Canadians, yourdomain.ca slash fr. I need to put my like, teeth back in. Okay, and the subfolder solution is obviously yourdomain.com slash ca slash en for the English speakers, and slash ca slash fr for the um, French speakers. Where are we at? Oh look, we've got this diagram back. So, we're now down to the, the information architecture. So, at this point, we've figured out the information architecture, but there's still many, many, many ways to screw this up. Here's the first one. IP redirects. I really don't like this. Neither does Kate. This is Kate here, she hates it. We were like having a big old debate when I was supposed to be practicing, practicing this yesterday, and we were just like, oh, I know, <laughs> it's so horrible. So right. The problem with IP redirects is all search engines come from a US IP, which means if you're not very, very careful with how you're redirecting, um, you can basically like hide the whole of your site. So like you might have tons of content for the UK, for France, but the search engines can't see it because you're just redirecting them. Um, I've also seen quite a big brand um, use an IP detection to dynamically deliver content. So in their infinite wisdom, they thought that like, oh, English people, right? People who speak English. We only need one page for those guys, right? The Americans, I'll spot from their IP that they're American and I'll deliver them prices in dollars. I'll show them a US phone number 
and um, like a, you know, a US address kind of thing, a US office address. And, and if I see people are coming from the UK, I'll deliver prices in pounds, I'll show a UK phone number and a, a, a UK bricks and mortar address. The search engines can't see any of the UK content because it doesn't exist. It, you haven't got a separate page targeting that. It, it's just beyond dumb, beyond dumb. The other thing is, you also need to make sure that the users can override this. So I am British, but right now, on American soil. Just because my IP says that I'm coming from the US doesn't necessarily mean that what I want to see is US content. So kind of don't second guess your users. Make sure they can override it if they want. And also bear in mind that your, your IP detection, where you've got multiple languages spoken in the same country, like Canada, where are you going to send those people? What, you'll just assume they're English or you'll just assume they're French? It's just not a great way of doing things. So if you really want to do this, do it, but just be really careful and really cute about it. My favorite, this is my favorite slide. It's very ugly though, never mind. Um, so, ways you can mess it up. This is, this is good old fashioned keyword research and Rich obviously did a whole load on keyword research. Don't think that just because you speak the language, you know how searchers in different markets who speak your language behave. This is a great example. I, I was doing some work for a, a niche uh, online job board, so a job advertising place basically, um, for the charity sector. In the UK, the term that's most popularly used is charity jobs, right? It gets 49,500 searches a month. That's exact match via the Google AdWords keyword tool. Um, and they wanted to launch in the US, right? They thought, that well, that would be easy. That would be really easy. We already speak English. It will be fine. But you guys don't search for charity jobs. You guys search for non-profit jobs. You don't know what charity jobs are. We speak the same language, but we don't search in the same way. So make sure, even if you're, even if you're, you're doing something, you know, maybe you're US-based now, but you're doing something for the UK, still do proper keyword research. Proper keyword research. You can't just apply kind of what you know in the US to the UK. It doesn't work, and it doesn't work vice versa. Or like anywhere else that speaks English, or anywhere else that speaks French, or anywhere else that speaks Spanish. It's not the same. It's kind of my favorite. <laughs> it's another favorite one. Cheap or just plain lazy translation. I don't have any prizes, but I'd still like you to get involved because I feel like I'm losing you. We need caffeine or some sort of, I don't know, energy drink. So um, uh, a, a real life site um, that I was doing some work on had um, the term dream box, dream box. Would anybody like, I'm going to step out of the light so I can see you. Would anybody like to hazard a guess at what dream box might mean? Anyone? Get your minds out the gutter, dream box. It means wish list, right? A direct translation. They did a crazy direct translation and figured that, um, I think possibly from Italian, that if you directly translate wish list, it's dream box. Sounds dodgy. Um, just saying, don't do it. So yeah, just, just be really careful of this stuff. Get, get like a really expensive translator instead. Get somebody who's absolutely awesome. Get a native speaker to check it really, really thoroughly. Um, because again, if you don't, you get horrible SEOs like me making fun of you at conferences, right? <laughs> Nobody respects that. Nobody respects you. They just take the mickey out of your site. And it's also going to have a massive issue in terms of like conversion rate optimization and all sorts, right? It's just going to ruin you. Don't do it. I'm running short of time. I need to speak quickly. OK, um, other ways you can mess it up. Failing to think locally. So I, I kind of mentioned before, for a search engine to understand where you're targeting is hard. Now, as a user, I can go on any site because I'm a human being and I have a brain occasionally. I make use of it. I, I can quite easily tell where that particular site is trying to target. Human beings can do that. Teaching a machine to do that is quite hard. So think about things machines can quickly and easily recognize, right? Phone numbers. Phone numbers are fairly easy for, for machines to realize like which country that phone number's for, which address that phone number's for. Um, local currency, these are good signals that you can send out to the search engine saying like, I want to target the UK. The way that you'll know that is because the price is in pounds, for example, okay? So just kind of think about that. And again, it feeds into conversion rate optimization again. Um, Toll-free numbers that don't work outside of the US. 
Nothing's going to make me hate your site more. Even if you rank in the UK, if I can't call you, but, and like I've got no way of calling you either. It's not like, oh, I've got to pay to call you. I can't call you. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So this is, this is like the full circle, except it's not a circle. It's just a thing. OK, anyway. So define your languages. Define your countries. Check that your brand translates. Then do your information architecture. Use a CCTLDs and or subfolders to target appropriately. Create language and country specific content. People often ask me, like, does Duke content count if I'm targeting different countries? And I laugh at them because it's like, well, you're not targeting a different country, are you? You're just translating your content and just hoping that it flies or hoping that it sticks. You've not done any keyword research. There's no reason for you to have duplicate content. It, it, you know, if you're just directly translating stuff like that, you're not doing your job properly, frankly. Step up. Also, use local currency, phone numbers, etc., to, to send out these right signals to the search engines and also to help the users that ultimately you want to transact with you. Come over all school, mommy. I quite like it. Right, OK, next. Um, it would be remiss of me not to mention geotargeting via Google Webmaster Tools. Definitely do it, right? Makes total sense to do it. Just bear in mind that like, only Google can see it. So if that's your international strategy, way to suck. OK, next. Getting really cross round. He's never going to ask me back. OK, these, by the way, just by the way, because um, somebody asked me if these were salmon. They're not. They're red herrings. Hosting is a red herring, right? You don't need to host where you're targeting. Um, I think maybe it kind of is, is born out of, I don't know, maybe in the US, lots of sites are US hosted. In the UK, lots of sites are US hosted as well. Like, you have much better, cheaper hosting options than we do. So don't worry about hosting in your target country. And beware of any SEO whose international strategy for you encompasses this as a key point, because it means they don't know an awful lot about international SEO, and you should go and get yourself another international SEO instead. Local links, we're there, we're there, we're there. 12 minutes, 23 seconds. OK, this is, this is quite exciting. I'm very excited about local links. Um, oh, look, you can't read that. <laughs> I'll read it to you. Um, so conventional wisdom says you need local links to rank. But do you? That was the question I really wanted to answer. So some things you need to know about me. I, I believe in unicorns and the Loch Ness Monster. I'm not sure that that will translate, actually. Don't worry about it too much. Google it. Um, I would never say Candyman five times in front of a mirror, ever. And neither should you. That's a pro tip. Um, but I don't like to accept conventional wisdom. I'm at that difficult age. I haven't since I was four. I made my brother wear a toga. That's not a girl. That's my brother. So that's nice. He's really pleased I've shared that with you as well. He's not on Twitter, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd put his handle up as well. So you could go, <laughs> nice. But I won't. It's, but anyway. So do you need local links? Pretty much anyone who's anyone preaches the need for local links. I'm guilty of this as well, right? I kind of stand up on stages and go, get yourself some local links. You'll just kick ass. But I wanted to see what relationship they really have with site rankings. So first things first, I wanted to establish if there's a relationship between the page authority, that's the SEO Moz metric that I'm sure that you're all aware of. Yeah, nod, nod. Somebody nod at me. Oh, thank you. See, he's nice. What's the matter with the rest of you? OK, so what is the relationship? Um, this, this, I upset my data scientist, Alice, with this graph, right? Because I wanted to show you what a correlation would look like. This is fake data. I, I've said it's fake everywhere, right? Fake data, not real data. Fake page authority, fake Google rank. I'm showing you this because I want you to try and have an understanding of what a correlation would look like. Now, this is obviously fake because something that ranked 10th in Google would probably have page authority of higher than 10. But it's just, just for you to understand, like, that this is what a, a correlation might look like. This is the page authority from the sample data, which I'm going to talk to you more about, that I took um, over rank. This is real data. So um, the, the bottom is Google ranking. So ranking 1 to 10. And the page authority is kind of up the side. How do I make this point? Oh, like that. OK. So here, um, what you can see is, is I've, we've, we've drawn like this box around it. So you can see kind of the, the, the basically the rough trend, right? 
Um, so, and, and Rand's already told us about this on numerous occasions. Page authority correlation coefficient is just under 0.3, which basically means page authority would account for around 9% of Google's algorithm. So we know it's not a perfect correlation because there's more than links in Google's algorithm, right? Are we with, I'm, I'm hoping you're gonna stay with me. Okay, so what did I do? Methodology, I took 15 keywords with commercial intent. I chose keywords with commercial intent because I wanted to minimize noise, right? If I'd have chosen a keyword like where do lions live, like, I don't need a local result for that, do I? Well, maybe, not near you. I don't know, you're okay. Or possibly, that would be awesome. But, but you know, so basically, keywords with commercial intent. Okay, I translated these into nine languages. That was actually quite hard. I, said, I had some help from Gianluca, I had some help with, 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 um, from various people, and the people like who I didn't know to ask about Polish and stuff, we had lots of fun with Google Translate, then bunging stuff into the AdWords keyword tool until we tried to find something with like actual search volume so we knew we were on the right track. So kind of some of these don't directly translate. So in France, for example, mortgages I couldn't get to translate, so we ran with personal loans. So basically it was kind of like along this theme, but we're not comparing them with each other, so we're quite safe. Okay. I then wanted to find out the percentage of local links those sites ranking in the top 10 have. So kind of like if I've, if I've got a page in France ranking first for Achete DVD, that was French, um, then basically um, I was looking at how many links has that site got which are French, yeah? And then I was going to look and see if there was a relationship between the two. So conceptual limitations, right? We know this is limited. I had a small data set. You can argue percentage of local links may not be the best measure, right? Should I have just looked at number of local links? Actually, I think number of local links is crappier, so I'm gonna stick with percentage, but I recognize it's a limitation. Open Site Explorer is what I used to actually get the um, linking uh, pages, and I recognize that Open Site Explorer may not have picked up all of the external links to a given page. These things we know. I didn't weight links for quality. Um, I didn't take into account the overall link profile of the site. Again, because I felt it would be too noisy. There are an awful lot of sites out there that target multiple countries via subfolders, and kind of looking at, at percentage of total site links, I felt would get too noisy, so I just looked at links to the page, but it's a limitation. Obviously, it doesn't take into account any other ranking factors, but I wasn't trying to explain Google's algorithm, so I kind of figured it was okay. My aim was just to find out like how important are local links as a factor? Issues, I had so many issues. I mentioned before that trying to figure out whether or not a link was local was really, really hard. Like there were tears, there were tantrums, I was kicking things, I was throwing things. It's really, really hard. Like as a human being, it's really easy, but, but trying to do it, it, it in such a way that's scalable, because you know, I didn't, I didn't have time to sit and look at, you know, a thousand different sites times 10 times 15 keywords times nine languages like I just didn't have the time to do that sadly so we we came up with with a, a solution right uh, now things I, I decided to discount hosting like I said hosting is just not a good indication of location it will throw up negative stuff all the time um, generic TLDs are used all over the place they're kind of like when I'm looking in France if it's a dot fr CC TLD wicked right that's French if there's a, an FR subdomain or an FR subfolder, again, problem is generic TLDs are used all over the place. So like in France, for example, um, a lot of, an awful lot of the sites are just .coms. They only target France, they're entirely in French, but they're .coms. So we have to settle for looking at language links. So I was looking at language links, not the location of the links. So that's kind of an important thing to bear in mind. I was going to say I built a marvelous machine. I didn't. Tom Anthony built me a marvelous machine that looked at the title tag of the top 1,000 linking pages to determine the language of the linking page. I'm hoping that you understand that. If not, it'll become clearer. Um, again, more technical limitations. It can be difficult to determine language from a title tag because a title tag is short, right? That can be difficult. Um, also, language, language detection software isn't 100% accurate. Um, I tried to use Google Translate not to translate things, but to detect the language. It's quite good at that. It's horrible at translating things, but in terms of detecting the language, it's not bad. But like, they're kind of shutting it down. 
Stuff kept crashing. It wasn't working for me, so we had to use an open source script instead. Um, it's not 100% accurate. None of these things are. But it agrees with Google Translate 81% of the time at more than 30% confidence. So it's pretty good. My data scientist will kill me for saying something like pretty good as well. Okay, and all of this is still way more scientific than conventional wisdom, right? So I'm not just going to come up here and go, you should definitely do this, and I haven't checked it. I've tried to check it. So, again, we're back to this fake data again. Fake data, this is what correlation looks like, might look like if it was real data. It's not real data. This is back to page authority again. So you can see how page authority, like there does seem to be some relationship there. So there seems to be some relationship between page authority and rank. Percentage of local language links. Okay, this is real data. I'm just going to flick back again. Can you see the correlation or relationship here? It's way looser here, right? I, I've coined the term baggy, which I'm told is not mathematical, but it is baggy, right? It's all over the place. There doesn't seem to be any kind of trend. We were worried about this, right? So we looked to get some additional validation. Basically, what we were worried about was that the pages that we looked at, that we, there were pages that had very few links at all, local or otherwise. And we were worried that they were skewing the data. So we binned the data. I don't know if Americans say binned. It kind of means siloed. We just cut the data up so we could um, look at it in, in smaller segments. So binned data. So these are just the pages with naught to, naught to 200 links in total. So kind of like you can see here that um, like there's a site that's ranking first. I'm going to try and get the pointer on this here. You can see there's a site here that's ranking first with no local language links. And there's also one here with 80% local links. But I'm not sure about this. Not to 200 links. I'm not too comfortable with it. So I elected that like, doesn't look like there's a, a correlation, but this just might be bad data, right? So we moved to 201 to 400 links. This is better data. This is more reliable data, but there's not enough of it, is there? No. 401 to 600 links. Again, better data, arguably, but not enough of it. So here's the sweet spot, for me, anyway. These are all sites with between 601 and 800 links in total, right? And this here is the percentage of local language links. So again, I've got a site ranking first, sorry, a page ranking first. This individual page has more than 601 links, and none of them are local language links. Similarly, up here, I've got a site ranking first, 80% local language links. It's still all over the place. It's still baggy. There doesn't seem to be a correlation between the um, local language links and ranking. It's not nice and neat. 801 to 1,000 links. Again, I'm kind of ignoring this data because I'm a bit worried about it. There's not an awful lot of it, for one. And also, I could only go up to 1,000 links because my tool kept falling over when I was trying to pull back any, anything more than 1,000. I also wanted to be able to give you the tool for free. The 1,000 links thing works much better for that. So what, what, what the hell am I saying? 47 seconds. The data we've gathered suggests that local language links do not correlate well with rankings and that actually local language links correlate less well with rankings than pure link strength. So I'm going to show you this not real data. This is what correlation looks like. This is page authority data. So this is link strength. So link strength as a whole seems to correlate better than local language links. What does it mean? Good links are perhaps more important than local links. My recommendations perhaps might be concentrate on getting good links, and you can perhaps worry less about how local or otherwise they are. But local links may become a stronger ranking signal in the future, right? What I'm showing you is right now, and it's right now in Europe. So, uh, you know, we know that we're all running off, off kind of like different versions of the same algorithm. I would hope as an SEO that given time, local links will become a more strong ranking factor because it's a better indication of quality, isn't it? Like a French site, if it's a good site, should have French links. So like what I'm saying is right now, you can, you can, you can go with this if you like. I'm not sure it's future proof is, is kind of what I'm saying, I guess. So 
Don't take my word for it, we're releasing the data and the tool, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. It's going to be next week when I'm back in the UK. Um, go and have a look at my data, I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Be nice, my mother is on the internet, okay? Seriously, be nice. Um, but you know, I genuinely, I'd love to hear your feedback. I also would love for you to go and play with this yourselves. I think if you do international SEO, it'll be a really useful tool for you anyway, in terms of benchmarking. Because I'm not aware, at least, of a tool that actually does this well for you right now, that has a look at like percentage of local language links. So I'm kind of loving the tool that Tom Anthony built in any case. So I'm hoping you'll find it useful anyways. Massive thank you to all of these people. I love you. And questions. <laughs>